Hello and welcome to my talk. So today I will be taking an interesting uh, perspective on the perception of reality. Do we see the reality as it is or are we being fooled by our brains? So what is reality? Let's go. What is reality? By definition, objective reality refers to the state of things as they exist, independent of any kind of human perceptions or interpretations. Perception of reality results from a multitude of sensory inputs and cognitive biases. These cognitive biases arise because each of us has our own conscious experiences when we are interacting with reality. But is it possible that we are misinterpreting the perceptions that we are having? So, for the longest time, people perceived Earth to be flat because it looked like it's flat. And after that, for a very long time, people perceived that Earth is the unmovable center of the universe because it moved as if all the galaxies and stars are moving around us. The sun is rising and setting in the west. So. Until Galileo and Copernicus proved it otherwise, we had these strong perceptions about our reality, right? Upon his discovery, Galileo gave a stunning uh, statement. He said, I think taste, odor, colors and so on reside in our consciousness. Hence, if the living creatures were removed, these properties would be annihilated. It implies that our sensory ex experiences are not the true reflections of the objective reality. It's merely a subjective projections of these realities. So it, it's kind of important that we try and understand what are we actually talking about or what are we actually perceiving? What is the objective reality? So I'll try to explain this to you, uh, taking example of visual, visual perceptions. So, uh, modern science says that vision is caused by involvement of one third of a human brain, which consists of millions of neurons and billions of synapses. If you take, around, take a look around this auditorium, you will feel or you will experience the vision to be like a snapshot, right? You see in a picture and it just registers in your brain, but is it so? So the mechanics of visions are partly like that. We have a lens in our eye, we have a retina where the image formations happen or there are photoreceptors which aid in this. But what about the neurons and the synapses, what are they doing? So what is actually happening is, as you are seeing, your brain is constructing all the objects, the shapes, the colors and the motions as and when they are happening in real time. It's not like a snapshot. Neuroscientists argue that we do not construct things, we reconstruct things. Let's understand what that means. So if you see on the screen, it's a bunch of circles with different patterns, right? And uh, it doesn't convey anything apart from that. But if I move the angles of these circles a little bit, a cube pops out. Is the cube there? Or it's just your brain tricking you? Why do we reconstruct things? So the argument of this lies in evolutionary fitness. Those of our ancestors who reconstructed the reality better than the others had a uh, fitness advantage. They were the ones who were like more likely to pass on their genes. So we all are the offsprings of ancestors who reconstructed reality and saw it more accurately than others. So here comes the notions that accurate perceptions are fitter perceptions. But does it hold true for every scenario? Let me take you to Australia. So this is an Australian jewel beetle. In this, uh, the females are comparatively larger than the male beetles. In 1980s, what scientists observe, uh, observed is uh, most of these male beetles were mounting beer bottles and trying to mate with it. So it puzzled them, like why so? Because uh, these beetles have been mating for thousands of years with the females, so one may say that the, they uh, perceive the reality of a female fairly well to be successfully reproducing for thousands of years. But turns out they have cracked the cheat, cheat code for this survival. So for this beetle, female is anything that's brown, glossy and dimpled. And 
the bigger the better so they were deceived by this perception so much that they uh, start they lost all interest in the female beetles and uh, they were pushed to a threatened uh, status and ultimately australian government had to change the beer bottles to save the beetles classic case of the males leaving females for the bottles right you may say that mammals are more advanced than beetles and they might not have these cheat codes but turns out not really so does natural selection really favor this notion that the truer perceptions are fitter perceptions Donald Hoffman is a cognitive scientist who challenges this notion with his fitness beats truth theorem which states that a strategy that simply seeks to maximize the expected fitness fitness payoff with no attempt to estimate the true world state does consistently better uh so what he advocates is we don't need to uh, perceive the true reality for survival so evolution has shaped us to see whatever's necessary for our procreation and that's uh, that's it so how what they did is they did a bunch of uh, simulation based on evolutionary game theory and they made artificial uh, worlds they assigned fitness functions to these worlds and then all these were uh, simulated only so organisms their strategic decisions everything was simul simulated and they did a mathematical modeling i am not going into the details of the simulations but what they fi found out was fitness is independent of the perception of truth for an infinitely large class of genetically chosen worlds organisms who makes a strategic decisions based on the fitness or the survival will triumph over organism who seeks truth and tries to see, uh, uh, make decisions based on truth so fitness has nothing to do with the truer perception of the reality so in that case we all are similar to the jewel beetles so during evolution we all have made strategic choices and shaped our uh, perceptions which has best suited our survival throughout time and the perception that what we see is the true reflection of reality is wrong perception is a spe species specific interface that is tailored to hide most of the underlying complexities of objective reality so uh, if you compare perception to a desktop so it's more like a desktop so the screen is like the space time around you and the icons of the desktop are the objects around you with which you interact so if you click on a text file or a, or on a folder you're interacting with the interface but you don't go into the intricacies of what's in the hardware or what's under the text right what is the binary code of that so perception is evolved to make things easier for you not delving into the depths of the true reality because we don't need to know the true reality so temporal reality is such, is one such concept which we are not evolved to learn or perceive because we don't need to perceive it for our procreations perception is about having kids only so with this i would like to end the presentation on this topic and what you see on this screen right now is a simulation of a 4d object but your brain is again tricking you to form this shape in your uh, and try to understand what's happening because the, in reality what's happening is is just a bunch of pixels dancing around on the 2d screen thank you and if you know want to know more about this topic uh, this concept was taken from the research by dr donald hoffman uh, and his book the case against reality and this is the paper related to it alka that was an alka that was an incredibly exciting talk uh, we shall take a few questions from the audience now no questions I think in blue, everybody's mind. <laughs> yeah. Are there any questions? All right. All right then. Thank you so much, Alka. Let's extend our heartfelt gratitude to all the student speakers who have enlightened us with their diverse and insightful talks.
Let's give a round of applause to our student speakers. This year we have something new, something exciting. We are introducing a mural painting activity in Shantini Ketan. We have a wooden board, a palette of vibrant colors, and an array of brushes ready for you. The canvas awaits for your artistic touch. A rough outline is there to guide us, but the real magic will happen when you infuse your individual styles. The mural painting will be open throughout the day, giving you ample time to participate at, at your convenience. High tea is being served at Shantini Ketan too. We kindly request everyone to be back by 11.40 so we can continue our event seamlessly. Thank you. Thank you.